but I know we got we got a new signing, and you're super pumped about this. You were saying future AW World Champion. You were singing this guy's praises up and down. Will Hobbs is officially all elite, and not only that, he's going to be teaming with the AEW World Champion himself, maybe testing the waters for a future title run. Um, John Moxley, as well as Darby Allen, when they take on Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, and the number one contender to the title right now, Lance Archer, in a six man tag team match next week. Now, obviously, Archer and Brian Cage have issues. But they're teaming because if Archer beats Moxley next month, then Cage gets the first shot. So they made sense out of that, which I like. But yeah, no, I thought this was a very good segment. In all seriousness, though, people are like, oh, Will Hobbs. Oh, my God, the guy's amazing. We've barely seen much of him. He's looked impressive to me on AEW Dark. Um, I like the fact that they signed him. And I don't want to hear this bullshit, oh, he wasn't signed two months ago. So that's why they had him lose to Orange Cassidy in 10 seconds. The guy's huge. He's a monster of a man. He's a big guy. They have a lot of big guys. He might be able to do well. He might get lost in the shuffle. We have no idea. We also have nothing to go off of with the guy. We know fucking nothing about him. And he's also not that amazing in the ring to justify this being the greatest signing of 2020. I'm very excited that they signed him. I am very happy for the guy. I need to see more from him. The guy might be a terrible talker. He might not have a character. Right now, he's a decent big guy. That's all he is. That has some potential. And I think he can go far if utilized the right way. I think this is a good way to use him from night one, establishing him as someone to watch for, teaming him with the world champion. Why the fuck Moxley would want to take someone who has like a 2-10 and record um, into this big main event match next week? I have no idea. That makes no sense to me. I said to you before the show, maybe because, you know, he's a big guy and the other two are big guys, Cage and Archer, I guess. But uh, what were your thoughts on the whole segment, RJ? I thought it was well done, but I definitely have my, you know, gripes with it. No, I thought it was a well done segment. Um, I like Starks and Cage and and Taz. Not a huge Archer fan. I think they just dropped the ball with them a lot, so I just don't give a shit. Just him like bringing random jobbers out to beat them up. Like who cares? Like oh, he's he's a badass. He beat up another loser. Like it does nothing for me. So that it just really hasn't done much for me. Um, I just I like understand like you said like guys big like he's got a good look, but. I mean, I don't watch Dark a lot, but any time I have watched, the guy's lost. So it's like, oh, now that he's signed, they're going to push him. Oh, my God, he's the greatest thing ever. Like, he was losing to Orange Cassidy and other, like, random people the last two months. And all of a sudden, now that he's signed, like, oh, my God, he's going to push him to the moon now. It's like, I can't get over the fact that he got lost to Orange Cassidy in five seconds. I mean, I I just can't. (laughs) Yeah. I can't get past that. That's like saying, like, Braun Strowman lost to Santino. They sign him, and I'm like, oh, my God, he's the greatest thing ever. Like, I'd be like, why the hell is this this guy in the, like, why? Like, why? It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's the part that just doesn't make a lot of sense because it's not like it happened a couple of years ago, a year ago. Dude, this was literally two months ago. And they want to tell you that dark matters. If it matters, then why the fuck would I, should I take this guy seriously that just lost the Orange Cassidy two months ago in under 10 seconds? That makes no sense. But I think he's a good signing. We'll see where he goes. 